This motion I just filed is for a testimonial hearing that will prove the Attorney General committed a felony by destroying evidence. And this is the State Attorney General responding by withdrawing Charge 1 and Charge 2. The charges related to them to destroying evidence. Yeah, you read this here right. Defendant objects to withdrawing these charges. We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. This is called flipping the script. The prosecution is now playing defense. If they want to pursue the trespassing charge, we get to bring on the record where they pulled out a search warrant to look into my phone's image files, video files, GPS location data, emails, websites visited, all call logs, including deleted messages, MSS, and all detailed records for a charge of trespassing. Actually, they had to wipe my phone's GPS location data because it wound up out of evidence lockup and in the president of the county bar's office. I got arrested Friday at the courthouse. Sheriff took my phone. Well, actually my phone is in a shed out behind Entwistle and Entwistle Roberts Law. Who, strangely enough, was the individual we were investigating for real estate fraud when we were arrested at the courthouse. Oh, hey, I don't consent. I don't consent. I don't consent. I don't consent. Who, strangely enough, utilized Special Agent Michael Carlson's father-in-law to author a fraudulent deed. Who is the same Special Agent that authored the warrant to break into my cell phone's GPS to wipe it. That's called an intentional Brady violation, and that's a felony. Likewise, if they pursue the charge for institutional vandalism, we get to bring on the record with the Attorney General fabricated evidence. Do you see this email here from July 6th where she says there is no invoice for damages? Now check out this invoice for damages dated July 22nd, six months after my arrest. Why on earth would a prosecutor so blatantly fabricate a document? Easy, I told the prosecutor to do it. Thanks, baby. While conducting my own defense, I discovered that the state needs to prove damages. So I email Christine and tell her that with no invoice, no damages, and no defacement, I'm gonna need something to see that there was institutional vandalism. And that very next day, she produces this invoice denoting damages from six months prior. The invoice that two weeks earlier, she says doesn't exist because she hadn't fabricated it yet. That's called an intentional Brady violation, and that's a felony. Thanks again, baby. Do you wanna live forever? Rawr! You know it drives me crazy when you quote Valeria like that. Do you wanna live forever? But I gotta stay focused. I gotta get done screwing you in this courtroom before we get into any of that role play, baby. Check out here where they drop the follow-on charge of disorderly conduct to a summary offense, which is the same thing as a speeding ticket. Whoa, this is major defense on behalf of the prosecution. A summary offense is typically decided by a single judge, not a jury. And the state has to convict me of a crime. Otherwise, they're on the hook for civil recourse for false arrest and malicious prosecution. Thanks, Counselor. We actually learned that one firsthand when the state charges with a felony for getting stabbed by their buddy. Really? So how'd you get off for stabbing me? Well, uh, I'm not off, I actually... Yeah, yeah, uh, you got off with murder pulling your pistol on me. Well, uh, I'm sorry. So you're, you're in... We pled out the disorderly conduct to avoid a 20-year prison sentence and a felony trial where the state police lose two Walmart CCTVs of the incident and don't charge my stabber for stabbing me. Which, funny enough, lets them plead out the disorderly conduct for stabbing me. The same charge they're trying to pin on me for getting falsely arrested. So that means the state just has to install one kid touching judge to find you guilty of something and make this all go away. This is standard Pennsylvania state practice. What they do is activate a senior retired reserve judge. This retired judge is appointed, not elected. So the state uses them to ram through egregious sentences to protect pedophile Pennsylvanians. We've covered this before in our video when we disqualified our last presiding judge, Joseph C. Maidenspacher. Pedo protecting Pennsylvania's pension for picking. Boop. Pedo protecting Pennsylvania's pension for picking him to preside over political politically connected Pennsylvania pedophiles. This is Pennsylvania Senator Michael Fulmer, who voted to increase the mandatory minimum sentences on sex offenders. Here he is receiving Marcy's Defender of Victims Rights Award, while he's got kitty porn on the phone in his pocket. The state sets it up for him to plead guilty to 40 years worth of charges, 
but Pennsylvania installs Judge Maidensbacher to knock it down to less than two so that he can avoid a state prison sentence. When we went before Judge Maidensbacher, we dragged everything onto the court record via written motions before the hearing, which the judge just flat out ignored. This is the same courthouse that they hid my triple attempted murder and stabbing as well. I know nothing about that and I'm suing them for racketeering. So when the state installs this new retired slash senior judge, Richard A. Lewis, we need to make sure he knows everything that's going on down here in Adams County, especially as it relates to these retaliatory charges for uncovering their real estate racket and bankruptcy racket. So we write up an emergency motion concisely detailing the racket. This emergency motion is procedurally mandated to be read by the judge immediately. So there's no plausible, I know nothing about that. Linked below, we see how our county courthouse grooms individuals into key positions of authority by admitting them to the real estate and bankruptcy racket. Okay, so circled here in blue is our official county court reporter, and in orange is where she removes the name of the president of the county bar three times in one sentence in one of her reports as it relates to the real estate racket, because our court reporter is part of it herself filing a fraudulent Chapter 7 bankrupt to maintain interest in real estate. And this is our District Attorney Brian Sinnott's false Chapter 13 bankruptcy, who, despite being a young single 34-year-old practicing DA making $62,000 a year, racks up over $100,000 in credit card debt alone despite owning zero property. He even gets to write off $70,000 in student loans, which is illegal as fuck. There is no way he would qualify for a single one of these hardship dismissals. But it's all good, man. He shacks up with his mother's bridge club partner, our lead stenographer that's about to retire after 40 some odd years in that courthouse. <laughs> Alright, I gotta share this one. Do you see down here below in our motion where we get a good Oedipus rip on this motherfucker? Well, even though he's not prosecuting my case, this docket shows that he's getting all of my motions forwarded to his office. <laughs> that means that fat motherfucker is reading you deconstruct his manhood as it comes across the court record. <laughs> It's pretty funny, y'all. You should read this motion. It's linked below. It goes on to show these false bankruptcies are just a benefit of the legal racket offered to select cronies. See? Here's my attempted murderer himself writing off student loans in a false bankruptcy. I could have gone on for days, but written motions are capped at 15 pages. Again, this is an emergency motion, so the judge has to read it. But we're not done yet. This is the motion for a testimonial hearing where we bring in Special Agent Michael Carlson to testify about why he pulled out that warrant and wiped my thumb. Well, you better show the judge why he should conduct this hearing. No doubt. So to support our claim that the prosecution destroyed evidence to protect this real estate racket, we drag onto the court record where they previously destroyed evidence to protect this real estate racket. Link below. We show where our county housing director gets caught paying herself a quarter million dollars a year, gets investigated for HUD fraud, and immediately hires our President Judge George's son as special counsel. While President Judge George is presiding over her son's 12 felony charges for sexually assaulting a pair of little girls. Okay, I gotta warn y'all, what you're about to read is verbally disgusting and graphic, but it's pulled straight from the court's finding of the facts. Fact number 53. The state police intimidate the girls to get them to change their stories and taint their previous testimony. Here is where at the dozenth or so interview, the 10-year-old girls informed that nuclear family member state police are watching through the mirror. Fact number 43. A child and youth services caseworker contacts the mom and states that there is cause for concern as it appears medical professionals have found a tear of some sort in her 10-year-old's vaginal area. Fact number 48. Child and youth services waits a month for the girl to heal up before they schedule another an exam, which finds nothing wrong. Fact number 48.1. The investigation loses both pictures of a tear in a 10 year old's vaginal area and only those pictures. Do you see this? All other pictures of the exam are there, sequentially numbered, except for the sequentially missing pictures of a 10 year old's torn vagina, which was the only physical evidence remaining in the case. That's called destruction of evidence and it's a felony. So after the police and prosecution lose or taint all of the evidence. It allows President Judge Michael George to throw the case out locally due to lack of evidence, 
five days before it goes to trial in the state capitol. <laughs> okay, I want you to look closely at this perfect Pennsylvania pedo protecting poetic justice right here. This case was to be heard in Dauphin County, which is where my currently assigned Judge Richard A. Lewis was the president judge at the time of this thrown pedo case. This means that after all the state shenanigans, this case wound back up in front of the judge that should have heard it in the first place. So when I drag this onto the court record, forcing the judge to view all the evidence, do you know what he had to say about it? Yeah, that was a still frame picture, but that's literally all he had to say about it during our last hearing. But he did grant the Attorney General's motion to withdraw the charges where I caught her felony destroying and felony fabricating evidence over my objections. No bullshit, y'all. If these charges all were drawn, I can't bring on the record the Attorney General's felonies that will automatically dismiss this case. So, obviously, Judge Richard A. Lewis is playing team defense for Pennsylvania State. The fact that he's even hearing this case, in spite of everything we forced his eyes to see, shows us he's just another pedophile protecting Pennsylvania judge. And you know what we do to those on this channel. I've come to the conclusion that I should recuse from this. We sun sue their ass with my favorite chapter. If your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Hey, Judge Richard A. Lewis, face down, ass up, dress on, wig on, when I proverbially bend you over that Adams County bench and fuck you in front of everybody. Dick. Thereby cementing my status as king of these here kangaroo courts. And the court's open to the public. So come on down and attend trial. At the time of this filming, I don't have a date set yet. Do you want to live forever? But it's coming soon, so keep a close eye on the community page. A lot of my subscriptions have been messed up, so if you're not getting my notifications, it helps to unsubscribe, subscribe, and then hit all notifications again. Come to trial, y'all. I promise, as king of these kangaroo courts, I'm going to put on a show, and it's all of the state's making. And court's open to the public. Hi, handsome. I was just finishing. Thank you, buddy. Hi, what a good one. Helicopter tail, engage. Wait, we'll wrap the film this way. Hi, hi, handsome hound. Were you guarding me while daddy was filming? What a good boy. I didn't get a, I'm still around. Hey, everybody, bullet the dog, bullet. Bullet, say hi to the camera. It's right there, it's, it's right there. No, not snacks. No, get out of my backpack. This is not your snacks. You gotta go find one skittering around the forest. Thank you, dog. Thank you for helping. Bullet's helping.